Okay, we're here at Arrow 2015, and I have a chance to talk to an old friend, Ansi Rakula, who is with the Atoll Airplane, and you have some big news to tell us about that just happened. Well, why don't you tell me when it happened, Ansi? Well, it happened a week ago in Finland, in Rovaniemi, in Arctic Circle. We finally made our first flight. So it happened to be also my birthday, so I remember the date. It's 4th of April. We are located in Finland, in Rovaniemi. It's an uh, international airport, Rovaniemi, and uh, it's exactly on the Arctic Circle, and our neighbor is Santa Claus. So it really is. I said it was near the Arctic Circle, but it's on the Arctic Circle. Is that right? Well, when I looked at it, it's April. Of course, I'm from Florida. In Florida, it's already getting quite warm. And I looked at the pictures of your first flight, and there's snow everywhere. And we don't know what that stuff is. So how was it to fly? Uh, you know, you didn't fly. Someone else flew. But tell me a little bit about the experience that uh, your pilot had with the airplane. And was that the designer? Yeah, Mark Koivorova, the head of our designer and the uh, uh, the uh, owner of the company, he, he flew and uh, he wanted to do the first flight himself. He flew for 26 minutes and everything uh, operated exactly like planned and even slightly better. No problems whatsoever. He, he tried the uh, slow speed and uh, approach to stall. And uh, we didn't have too much time to, to try anything else because the next day we had to, to pack it on a container and ship it here. Well, and so this is the actual aircraft we're looking at here that did that initial flight, and this is the same one you've been showing, I think, at the air show we saw you last year here at Aero. But people will look at this and go, well, okay, it's a, it looks like a nice new airplane, it looks very good, but in a way it's not a new airplane because he flew many years ago. Tell me a little of the history of this airplane, Anzi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This airplane has been flying already in the 90s. This was built as a kit because we, we produced this plane at previ previously in the in early 90s and they were sold as kits. So this aircraft has been bought by our customer and he, he built the plane himself and he flew it for two years. After, he, uh, after that he lost his medical. And then he stopped flying and he, he uh, restored the plane and afterwards we bought the plane back to the uh, company. And um, we thought, you know, small resources that we uh, going to achieve what we are trying to do, the best and fastest way to, to modify the old flying airplane into this new version. Well, we found out on the way that maybe we should have started from the scratch. But anyway, this, this bird has been flying and now it's totally modified. All the techniques have been going through, so it's, I like to say it's totally new, modern aircraft, but it has a long history and we have a long experience of this material and this aircraft. Now that makes it different. We have some other very exciting airplanes that I write about on my website. Uh, some, some interesting machines. Most of them are still in, the, in development stages or are still coming and I wish them well and they're exciting and that's good. But you have an airplane that's available now. You are delivering I think a first one to the customer very soon. But as I look at this airplane and I think about its long history, and it was a wood airplane to begin with. The original model of the Atoll was a wood, right? Tell me a little bit about its construction materials and then we'll come back to what kinds of changes you made to the airplane to update it. Yeah, yeah it's still the, the most of the airplane is wood composite. And, and uh, so the most of the components is, is made from wood and that's the secret of the weight. That's how we achieve the payload, which is uh, at least 20, 275 kilos. And uh, the thing... Right, let's, let's do that again. Tell me what the, the payload now, this is with fuel or without fuel? That, that's the payload. Payload, okay. You're, you're an airline pilot. You know about payload. It's very important how you make a living. So payload, that's a big number for payload in an aircraft of this type. And you're saying the wood is responsible for that. Yeah, because, because it's very light. And that's why we can make the plane so light. And, and uh, that's why we haven't changed the main component of the aircraft. We do use other fibrics and we do uh, carbon fibers and, and glass fibers where they are needed and, and uh, where they are at, it, at their best. But we think that the wood composite is the best in the major areas and that's why we haven't changed that one. Now some people know that wood 
people think of wood, well, that's not a composite, but in a sense, it is a composite. It's the original composite, perhaps. Fiberglass and carbon fiber, they're wonderful, but they all came much later, and airplanes flew for many years with just wood as the resource. However, that has some vulnerability, in, especially in a seaplane environment or perhaps a cold climate. So these other materials give the airplane more durability, do they? Well, that, that's what what people think, but we have more than 30 years experience and we have, like this plane has been built in the early 90s and if, if you take a closer look you can see that it's totally like looking like new. This particular airplane? This particular airplane, yes. So, uh, so that's why we, for those people who might uh, have a doubts, we give a 10 year warranty and that's a renewable warranty. So after 10 years, you send a plane to us and we inspect it. And if it's maintained like we uh, instruct you, then we renew the warranty for the next 10 years and on, on and on. Well, that's a long time. Okay, as we begin to wrap up here, I'd like you to tell me not every single change that you made, but you did some changes to the airplane from the original uh, that you now think it might have been better to start from scratch, but you didn't. And it's a, it's a, it's a nice looking execution. Hit me some of the highlights, Ansi, and tell me some things that you changed about the airplane. Yeah. Well, first of all, we, we longed the uh, fuselage by one meter. We, we took a half meter in the cockpit area. That's why we uh, made the cockpit more roomy. And, and then we had an extension in the rear to make the, long, long, uh, the uh, stability a little bit better. That, that we knew from, from the previous model that has to be improved. And now it, it's, it's great. And then all the techniques, you know, uh, of course we have the newest Rotax engine, 912 IS Sports. The whole engine cowling is new and, and uh, the, the uh, support uh, frame. Then all, all the, uh, uh, of course, all the electronics are new. All, all the push rods have been replaced by uh, carbon fiber push rods instead of aluminum tubes. So, so like I said, that most of the inside has been new. But the basic structure remains the same as it was from back into, it was back into the 80s, was it not, yeah. when uh, Marku first flew it? Yeah, it was designed in the late 80s, and then, then it was uh, on, on a production in the early 90s. Yeah, the, like the wing is exactly the same like it used to be still, so there was nothing to improve that. Well, that's a lot of good information for our observers on YouTube and on my website. Uh, tell me how we can find you on the web, and we'll put it up on the screen for you. Yeah, you can find us from our website, www.adel.com. Adel.fi, uh, sorry. <laughs> Got to remember where you're from. I made a mistake, but you can't make that mistake. You live there. So in Finland, talking with Ansi Rakula, I'm Dan Johnson. We're here at Aero 2015, where we got a chance to see an airplane that just made its maiden flight on Ansi's birthday. So happy birthday, and Thank you. congratulations to a successful flight.